News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law, 727-9900 today. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Prump Valley Speedway is cleared to start the season and the community pool is closed for the summer. You're watching KPVM News 25. Local coverage you can count on. Drivers start your engines. Racing season begins at the Speedway. It's Friday, June 5th. I'm Janet Arrett in for Deanna O'Donnell. Racing is back at Pahrump Valley Speedway. The track's been closed since March due to the coronavirus pandemic. But the checkered flag will drop again when racing resumes tomorrow night. Speedway owner Chad Broadhead is excited to be back in business. We've been shut down for quite a while due to the virus and uh, we're proud to say we're going to reopen. It's taken a lot of work and this is a big step for our county to reopening. In our bleachers we've had to go through, we separate our bleachers, every other seat is closed. There is six feet spacing between all the bleachers, uh, so we're limited. We have a 1,200 capacity, we're going to cut it down to 500. We have 200 limit in the pits for cars, we're going to cut that down to 100, but actually uh, we're, we're going to move it down to 75 just to be on the safe side, try to make sure everything's right for everybody, and that everybody can come out and have a good time and not have to worry so much about all the social distancing. Saturday night, you know, 7 o'clock, we're going to be starting. The little kids are really excited to come back racing, and I'm excited to have them back. We're going everything from the mini dwarfs up to the modifieds. Uh, so we're going to have mini dwarfs, mini stocks, coupes, uh, hobby stocks, super stocks, sport mods, and the A mods. So we have a full field. The tickets are all standard price, seven, uh, $10 for uh, adults, eight for seniors, and six for kids. Family pack, mom and dad, and four kids is still $30. We're gonna see how this race goes, and we're gonna see how the crowd reacts, and if everybody's social distance good, we'll keep going. But if not, we might go back to one race a month. Like I say, it's a big step for our county, you know, and especially as sporting events, because everything is closed. All the sporting stuff has been shut down. And yes, we are an outside venue, but this is the first step for Nye County and Nevada to reopen all the sporting events. You know, we have the uh, football coming with the Oakland Raiders and we got the Golden Knights. Well, if we can show them what we can handle this and we can do this on the right way and keep the crowds down, then everybody can be part of this and our sporting events can come back to our, to our state. Pahrump residents will have to find another place to take a dip this summer. The town has announced the Pahrump Community Pool will remain closed for the season. The decision to close the Pahrump Community Pool this year was announced today on the town's website. Managers say several factors went into the decision to keep the pool closed, including the low number of applications received for seasonal positions and other extenuating circumstances tied to the coronavirus pandemic. The call for applications was first made May 5th, then again two weeks later, and a spokesperson says at this point there would not be enough time to repost again, hire, and then effectively train seasonal staff to operate the pool. The posting says it would take a month to properly train those needing to become Red Cross certified lifeguards and it would take additional time to train for social distancing requirements. Managers say they know the pool season is a summer highlight and eagerly anticipated by many. They thank the community for understanding and say they look forward to serving everyone in 2021. Nevada Governor Steve Sislak addressed the George Floyd protests in a video posted to Facebook. The governor says he welcomes the protests as long as everyone acts within the law. And protesters in Las Vegas will begin to see so-called legal observers who will be on hand to help advise protesters of their legal rights. George Floyd died because the officers who were arresting him did not listen to his cries that he could not breathe. And because Mr. Floyd can no longer speak for himself, protesters across the country are speaking for him. I am asking all Nevadans to listen to our neighbors who are crying out. As a white man, I cannot claim to understand what it is like to live in the fear of police encounters. But as governor of Nevada, it is my duty to speak on behalf of all Nevadans, but particularly those who might not otherwise have a voice that is being heard. 
Here's what I can commit to you. I will no longer be party to a system that dictates how minority communities should express their First Amendment right to protest or their human right to grieve. For those who will be out on our streets asking to be seen and to be heard, I thank you. Please do so safely and lawfully. For those of you in Las Vegas, volunteers from our legal community will be present to observe your events. They will be wearing red t-shirts that say legal observer on them. They can help. They can help you to understand your rights and what conduct is lawful. But as you protest, know that I see you and I'm listening. Please be safe out there. Let's love one another as we work through these hard times. There is no doubt that if we do that, if we do it together, we will come out stronger. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this break. News 25 is brought to you by Star Nursery, your garden's partner for every blooming thing. Unemployment claims fell below 2 million for the first time since March. Salaried workers at Ford won't return to the office until September, and China will allow U.S. airlines to fly into China starting Monday. Here's Angela Miles. Tapping our news, unemployment in America is on the long road to recovery. Last week, 1.8 million people filed for claims for unemployment checks. It's the first time since March that number has come in under 2 million. But there are still 21 and a half million Americans in need of unemployment benefits. Salaried workers at Ford won't be returning to offices until September. The automaker planned for a late June reopening of its offices, but now has pushed back that date to implement COVID-19 safety measures. Tyson Foods in Iowa is bringing back its attendance policy. That policy calls for employees who miss too many shifts to be fired. Workers who are ill are allowed to be absent. China is allowing U.S. airlines to fly into China at a rate of one flight per week starting Monday. President Trump had threatened to block Chinese flights from entering the U.S. Nye County received confirmation of two new COVID-19 positive test results Thursday afternoon. The two people are residents of Beatty. The county also moved four Pahrump positives to recovered status. Time is running out to cast your vote in next Tuesday's primary election. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, all voting is being done by mail-in ballot. The process is simple, but all ballots must be postmarked by June 9th. Step one, receive and open your ballot. You should have a ballot, an instruction sheet, a privacy sleeve, which sometimes doubles as your instruction sheet, a return envelope. Step two, refer to the instruction sheet for important information. Use a black or blue ink pen, not felt, to mark your ballot. Fill the oval of your choices completely. If you make a mistake, do not use correction fluid or tape. Cross out the name of the candidate or question you didn't want to vote for. Make sure the bubble of the candidate or question you did want to vote for is fully filled in. Step three, fill out your ballot. You don't have to vote in every category. If you vote multiple times in one category, no vote will be counted. Step four, detach the ballot stub. This is yours to keep for your records. Be careful when you detach it. You don't want to damage your ballot. Step five, insert the ballot into the privacy sleeve. This may be a separate sleeve or your instruction sheet may double as a privacy sleeve. Part of your ballot may stick out, that's okay. Step six, slide the privacy sleeve with ballot inside into the return envelope. Please only include one ballot per envelope. If you include more than one, none of them will be counted. Step seven, sign and seal your return envelope. Depending on your return envelope, you may need to sign it before you seal it. The signature location varies by county, but each return envelope should be clearly marked with a sign here line. Your signature will be compared with the signature on your voter registration. If your ballot is not signed here or signed somewhere else, your vote will not be counted. Step eight, mail it in. In order to be counted, your ballot must be postmarked by election day, June 9th. If you misplace or ruin your ballot and you need a new one, please visit mailitinnevada.com for more information. 
Simple, secure, and everything you need is in your mailbox. Now it's time to mail it in, Nevada. We'll be back with more right after this break. This segment of the news is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyers, Nye County's injury attorneys. Don't get bullied by insurance companies. Call Jason Ernest and bully them back at 775-727-9500. Nye Communities Coalition has a number of resources available to help job seekers as well as employers looking to hire qualified workers. And best of all, the services are free. NYCC Adult Workforce Programs Manager Ed Kelly says his agency is eager and ready to help. With COVID going on and everybody kind of, you know, having to follow safe distancing, social distancing, disinfection rules, all that kind of stuff, we've been open and helping clients by appointment only on on campus. Uh, as you can see, my room here is uh, being remodeled and was worked on before uh, the COVID came. So we're moving back in, but we are, we got a lot of extra funding right now. Um, and we're reaching out to the employers and to the job seekers or those that are unemployed right now. If you're on unemployment and you don't know that you're going to be able to return to your job because of the cutbacks or just changing, we have a lot of training dollars right now that we can spend if you're interested in training. You can still get your unemployment while you're going to training. We can get you that additional education so that maybe you can get some more certificates, some more education, be more employable. Um, we also, for the employers, if they are looking to train their individuals that they have already or bring in additional ones, we have the training that we can do on the job trainings and possibly reimburse up to 50% of wages to those employers for that training period uh, with successful on the job training programs. So right now I have a lot of money. Um, we got additional funding. I need to spend it. Um, and so we have that out there. I just want to get that out to the public, to the job seekers, to those that are maybe just underemployed or unemployed, maybe looking to just change themselves a little more education and to those employers that we can really benefit you, benefits the employee and benefits the community. So. Um, Give us a call. We'll set an appointment. We'll have you come on down. Uh, the campus is open, but not fully open. We are working remotely for a lot of it, but we are open by appointments to come in, utilize the computers, build your resume. We have our workshops are open again uh, for orientation, which will tell you all about our programs. Come on down, make an appointment or call for an appointment. Wednesdays at 9 a.m. is orientation and resume builder dress for success and um, come on down and see us. Let's get you, let's get you in, involved in our program. A major road, road project in Pahrump is nearing completion. Nye County Director of Public Works, Tim Dahl, says paving is now complete on Leslie Street between Basin and Irene, but there's still a bit of work left to be done. The Leslie paving uh, was completed late last night. Uh, so all of Leslie has brand new asphalt on it, including the asphalted driveways that were there that we uh, widened the road to and, and fixed those. Mm -hmm. uh, we've still got a lot of work to do to clean that up, to address the other driveways, to shoulder up to the new asphalt thickness. Uh, so we're, we're, we're still working on that. Uh, striping, we still got to stripe it. Um, so in the meantime, if we could you know, continue to ask the public to, to give us a break, so to speak, and have a little patience. We'll be done with that thing before you know it, and and nobody will uh, uh, have been affected, hopefully, by the disturbance of all that construction. Um, we're going to be continuing to work on the, uh, the right-of-ways, so um, with all our, our resources focused on Leslie for the last uh, significant amount of time, we're going to be diving back in on uh, the weeding and all the other dura patching activities that uh, we normally would be doing this time of year without a big project like that. The town of Pahrump is proud to present free movies in the park once again this summer. The second night of movies continues Saturday night, June 6th, with a beautiful day in the neighborhood. June 13th, come see Frozen 2. 
June 20th, A Dog's Journey. June 27th, Playing with Fire. June 11th, the movie Abominable, followed by A Secret Life of Pets 2, July the 18th. The Lion King is July 25th. August 1st is Smallfoot and ending the summer with Sonic the Hedgehog, August 8th. The movies are shown on the, on the field at Ian Deutsch Memorial Park. Uh, social distancing is being observed. Bring the family chairs or a blanket and some snacks and have some fun. The movies start at 8.15 p.m. Please arrive early. There are dozens of great pets available for adoption from Desert Haven Animal Society, and today we meet one of them. Darby O'Donnell introduces us to Mickey. Today's Save-A-Pet is proudly sponsored by Jason Ernest with Mountain West Lawyers. Call 775-727-9500. Hi, I'm Darby here at Desert Haven Animal Society, and today we are joined with Mickey. Mickey is a male adult. Um, he looks to be like a chihuahua mix. He has some black ears and a little white all over and some black spots. They call him Mickey because he actually does have a spot on his back that does look like Mickey Mouse. So Mickey was an owner surrender, so he is a little bit nervous right now. He's a little shy because this is a completely something he's never been used to. He's been with this owner for many years, um, so he's just a little nervous. So he he's hoping to find his forever home and someone who will be patient with him while he adjusts to a new lifestyle. So if you come out and see Mickey or any of his friends here at Desert Haven Animal Society, Mickey is definitely a dog that you want to get on the ground with, spend a minimum of 15 minutes with, and go and pet under the chin so that he goes and gets nice secure vibes from you. So give them a call ahead of time so you can make an appointment to visit the animals, 775-751-7020, or you can always look them up on their Facebook page at Desert Haven Animal Society. Bye, Mickey. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Let's take a look at our weather cam. It's a beautiful, sunshiny, somewhat cloudy day. It's been a little windy today. We'll be back with more weather after this break. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hello and welcome back to News 25. I'm Michael Donahue. Today in Las Vegas, we had a high of 102 degrees, a low of 74. Death Valley, 112, a low of 77. 100 degrees, a low of 65 in Amargosa. 97, 61 in Beatty. 88, 54 in Goldfield. 87, 52 in Tonopah. 86, 56 in Carson City. 94, 59 in Fallon. And up in Fernley, 91, their low is 58 degrees. Now today in Pahrump, we saw sunny skies. Our high today was 100 degrees. Winds out of the south up to 23 miles per hour. 10% humidity and our sunrise at 526 this morning. Now for tonight, we're expecting clear skies. Our low is going to be 66 degrees. It's 97 outside currently with winds coming out of the south-southeast up to 17 miles per hour. Humidity at 35% and our sunset at 758 tonight. Now looking into that seven day, we're expecting nothing but sunny skies pretty much all through the week. Still dealing with some high winds on Saturday, up to 23 miles per hour, down to 12 and 15 miles per hour on Sunday and Monday, and then next Thursday and Friday, up to 13 and 17 miles per hour. Now, for temperatures on Saturday and Sunday, we're pretty much going to be in those mid to low 80s, dropping down to a high of 79 on Monday, back into those 80s on Tuesday, and then up into those 90s once again by next Wednesday. Now, for overnights over the weekend, we're going to be seeing our our lows in about those 50 degree range. By Tuesday, we're gonna be back into those 60s. We're pretty much just gonna be hanging out in that 60 bracket for a majority of next week. And so now with that, we're gonna throw it back to the desk with Janet. Well, that's it for News 25. I'm Janet Errett. We'll see you next time.